something up. So, so yeah, I, I, I've learned some sets, but how do you actually teach it in practice? Do you think, do you think that comp, you think the, so you believe the theory is just lack of information is why people are freaked out about it. I think that's, I think that's right up there because okay. now, now when I learned this, there was hardly any internet. I look up Princeton offense playbook in Google in 2002 and, you know, just after the dial up internet, but I look it up and I find maybe, maybe one playbook. I, right. I find one person talking about it. Now you can find a lot more now, but there's still a lot of misinformation, uh, a, a lot of uh, breakdowns out there that um, are, are, people, are, are coaches breaking it down, but I've never run it. So there's a lot of, a lot of inside stuff that they're not seeing. And what do you mean by that for people that are out there looking? So at what I see, I, I see a lot of coaches, uh, when, you, when you go on YouTube, and you see a video broken down about how to run a specific set, you'll see them break it down as they see it. But you're not getting the why they're doing this and the how they got into that or what they did before or, okay. or what they do after. Okay. So you're only getting bits and pieces. There's a lot of, lot of great stuff on, on – you can get a lot further faster now than you could 20 years ago when I was learning it. Right. Um, but, but there's still a lot of um, – there's still a lot of holes. Yeah, it's not like the it's not like yeah, the it's, it's not like the swing where I can I could teach you no, the swing in two no. minutes. And, and, yeah, and yeah. some some Princeton coaches have been putting out some some information, but but they were they were so secretive about it. Um, and that article I referenced before um, that they did on Pete Krill back back I think oh one or two, but you know they talked they they would call up Bill Carmody. He would not let him in practice. He would not send him anything. He said, "Go learn it on your on your own." Click. Right. And you know because. In a perfect world, Princeton did not want anyone else to run this. And, and I think uh, just, just history of it, Jimmy Tillette was the first one at Sanford at the time who actually he, – he took like a year or two. He, he broke down the entire offense, uh, and he put it in. And then uh, someone was watching them play and called up Bill Carmody and said, hey, listen, <laughs> they're running it better than you guys. But it, it's, and they're like, well, how are they doing this? You can't learn this offense from Phil Malone. So um, – so that's that's a that's a big roadblock for coaches to run it. it. It is built on this, this. They didn't want anyone else to run it. They were there was an inner circle would not give you a thing. So that that has held a lot of coaches back. But I would say the second thing is once they do learn some of the sets. Well, how do I? I on, on my Facebook page, I get a lot of coaches ask, well, how do you break it down? How do you teach it in practice? And they go right on to turning the offense into a drill. So, so how do I do, how do I turn this? How do I drill it? How do I do it? Three on O? How do I do it? Four on O? And, and I'll give you. And those are good questions. That's actually a good question. Cause most coaches break their offenses down three on O four on O. Right. They're going to show and This is how I learn how to play. And this is how I learn how to coach. You show the whole thing. show the yep. big picture. Then you go break it down three on O four on O. Then you come back and do it five on O and, and, and you guys got it. That works with, you know, it, it's, it's, it's been a, a staple. It's worked for a long time, but with Princeton, that big picture is a lot bigger. Right. Um, and the problem I have and what Princeton coaches have with three on O four on O or three on three, four on four is when you're running your offense, three on O as a drill, your players don't know where the other two offensive players are. Now you can tell them, but they'll forget. They don't know where those other two defenders are. You can tell them, but they'll forget. And then they're going to do something in that drill that you cannot do in a five on five game. Like so, give me an example. So, so let's say we're, um, let's say we're running low post and we're, we're running it as a drill. So I've got two coaches out here um, as passers, there's two balls in the drill so we can get our, and you can, you can do it. You can teach it three on oh, four on oh, and teach it as a drill, maybe in the skill part of practice, but when you're actually working and turn it into a shooting drill, turning it into a passing drill. But when you're actually teaching it, to the op, te actually teaching the offense, you don't want to break it down that way. So let's say we're running, um, we're running point screen away, and we throw it to the five man, and we go screen, and we throw it back to the guard. Now the guard, he might come off of now maybe the coach is setting the ball screen, maybe the, maybe that's the one of the empty spots, or maybe the empty spot is in the corner to the right. So they want to drive somewhere, and the coach is going to have to stop. You can't do that. There's a defender there. I know you can't see him, right. but there's a defender there. It's kind of like. When you're when you're running low post or you're doing something three on zero, and and you tell them how many how many times you've seen this coach throw the ball to wing and they throw a bounce pass or a chest pass to the five man right and you're like you can't do that yeah, because there's a defender standing in front of you so so when you teach things three on zero four on zero you see stuff like that they okay. try to drive to a spot where they can't drive in a game because there's other defenders there and. Okay. 
and if you teach it that way, that's what you see in the game. You see them trying to do things that they can't do in the offense because they couldn't see it or get enough reps doing it that way in practice. Okay. So that makes sense. That makes sense that they can't like, yeah. And I think the more complicated the offense, the, the more you can't do that little stuff. It, it, took, it took me two years as a head coach to really figure that out because when I first started teaching it, I did do it 3 0 and 4 0. Okay. And, and I learned I was actually able to teach it faster, 5 0 5 0 5. And so we, we took the whole part whole and we scrapped it uh, for something we call the progression method. Okay. So we teach it step by step by step. Now, this, this is where coaches, if you don't have a lot of patience, you're either going to have to have a little bit of patience, you're going to have to tell your players, hey, it's going to take me a day or two, but then we're going to get here and uh, you know, light bulb is going to go off. Eyes are going to, coach is going to see it. Eyes are going to get real big. They're okay. going to say, Hey, I got it now. But what, so I know your next question is explain the progression method. Yeah. So let's say we're doing low post and you have your four guards out and your uh, so your four, two guards up top, your two forwards on the wings, Yep. Your low post. So we're going to throw it to the low post, throw it to the wing, cut down the corner. We fill the point wing and corner on the, on the weak side. Now, when we run low post, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to throw it down to the low post. Now, in, in a this this um, I'm going to skip some of this because you have to see it on video. So you okay. see how we manipulate the yep. defense because this is exactly where we start manipulating the defense, especially if you're in high school. When the ball is in the low post, you got you got the five man defender and you got two help side guys right there in the paint. Right. And so we we what we do as soon as the five man touches the ball is we backdoor the kid from the point. It does a whole sorts of things for the offense, but that's the first thing we're doing. So when we teach it five on O is we're going to hit the five man and we're going to backdoor from the point. We're going to let our five man throw a little bounce pass, get that guy back door, get him a layup. And um, we're going to rep that for maybe five day one. We'll do that for five minutes. So for, and you might say it's a, a very repetitive, but they're building the foundation. This first week that we practice it, we're, we're really building the foundation. So we'll do that for five minutes. And then the next five minutes, so what we do is, hey, now we're going to throw it to the wing, throw it down a low post. We're going to backdoor the point. Hey, five man, point's not open. He's not open backdoor. So what do you do next? Well, the reason that what that backdoor does for us is we try to remove the defense inside the paint, outside the paint. If we can do that, the second thing that we do is that five man, hey, five man, go score. So we'll let them start working their way to the middle and go through the progression of uh, post moves and right. try to score. So we're going step by step. So the third thing we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, we're going to throw it to the wing, throw it to the low post, back to the point. The point is not open, back door. Five man, you can't score. What do you do next? Okay, we're going to throw it to the player at the point. That's the next thing we're going to do. And we're just going to progress step by step by step by step. And it's going to take a practice to practices. But then it's going to – but once you get to a certain part, part of the offense, I, your players – it's really one of the coolest things. You look – especially when we have new freshmen come in and we get to that part, freshmen's eyes just get real big. Oh, I get it now. This is so easy. And, and, um, and once they get it, they get it. And okay. the other thing that we've done there is we've done so many repetitions. Is this – they can they, – I've got players now probably graduated, uh, um, you know, eight years ago could probably come back and still run this offense because of how much repetition they got. And, and, and that's just, and, that, that, and that the repetition helps. you're doing, I don't necessarily know what you're doing when I'm playing you. Ex exactly. So, um, cause otherwise I'm going to try things. Otherwise I'm going to try to take all those things away. Exactly. So, and that's where, so that was just a very simple, the first three things that we do. But now we're going to throw it to the point, and, and the point's going to have two options. When we're teaching it, we'll teach this one first, and we'll, we'll teach it for five minutes that day. The next day, we'll teach it for three minutes. The next day, we'll teach it for three minutes, depending on what we need. Our assistant coaches say, hey, you know, we need a little more, more time on this block. They got this, and we can move on to the next one. And, and that's how we progress through the offense. But we'll teach them once we get day three, day four. Now we're starting to teach counters. Now we're, hey, if, if this isn't open, you can do this or this. If this is not open, you can do this or this. So if you're trying to scout me and you only see us go back door and we play the second time, maybe in, we play that game. And if it's a league game, we're playing you a second time. Second time I play you, we might just use it every time. We try to keep you off balance that way. The but kids must love this because it's all five on five. It's all five on oh, five on five. And the other reason the kids love it is because everyone touches the basketball. Right. And, and your role players don't have to, you know, it, it, this doesn't change. Uh, if we've got a stud, our stud still scores 16, 18 points a game because the ball always finds them, but everyone's involved. 
and your less skilled players, you know, one, one, your less skilled players. Um, I, I've had players who were not very good, had a hard time seeing the floor, but in practice, they could run and execute that offense because of the way that we taught it. What the kind of shots are they getting out of that? What kind of shots, not my stud, what kind of shots are my four, five, four so, through seven getting? Yeah. So going, going back to the, the ones, let's say we're going through those progressions and we're teaching that in practice. Once we say get to a drift, we're now, uh, we're, your, your stud could catch that ball and just, you know, he catch the ball in the middle of the floor. He see a gap, he can get there. But your role player can catch the ball in the exact same spot, exact same gap, can't get there. What we like and how we teach this, and, and we get our reps this way in, in the practice, now we're setting a, like a drift screen. Or we're running a backdoor cut. And that backdoor cut takes their defender and the next defender to help. That gets the next player open. So sometimes they just have to fill from the corner of the wing and they got a good look. And a role player can knock down that shot. The, okay. a, stand, a stand still three. A, a role player can knock down. A role player can get off of what we call a drift, not a flare. It, it's a little shorter motion. That they can get their feet set a little bit easier, and they can get a better shot out of so, that. So what? 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 Give me the three most popular shot. What you're gonna get? Th what kind of shots are you gonna get on this offense? So I, we get we get a lot of we get a lot of baseline. We get a lot of drives to the basket. Or when we're running point, especially, we'll get to okay. this point. Where we're trying. We'll get drives to the basket out of point. We'll get drives out of the basket off the chin drift. Okay. And then we're getting threes. We'll get threes um, one way, sending a kid back door. And what happens? So if I break down a back door, let's say we got point wing corner okay. and we dribble the wing. When that player goes back, this is why I like back door versus cut, cut their face. Cause we always used to jab away, try to cut their face. But when you do, when you cut in front of your defender, that next defender is like, Oh, he's got it. Okay. Right. But if you cut behind, it's, it's a natural instinct where that next defender is like, oh, no, they got beat, and I've got to drop down and help my guy. Right. As he's recovering, the next guy just steps up to the three-point, steps up from corner to wing, replaces him, and they get a good look that way. Um, they also get a lot, of, a lot of threes off of the chin drift. That's why you see them run chin a lot is because they'll get a lot of wide-open threes off of that drift. And, chin, and there's a ball screen on chin. Uh, there's not a ball screen on chin, but we put that in as a wrinkle. A wrinkle, That's what okay. we would call a wrinkle, or, or we would do some kind of misdirection and set a ball screen or a drag screen um, out of a different, different spots, different areas. Um, but, yeah, you're going to be able to get a lot of drives to the basket, more than you think. Um, you're going to get a lot of, lot of open threes just off of a back cut or off of a drift. And we do a lot of driving off that chin drift. We get a lot of drive and kick, drive and kick, um, and a lot of movement like that. Um, the back doors we get, um, multiple back doors throughout the entire offense. And, and, and don't, don't get confused and think that the Princeton offense is not a gimmick offense. It's not a backdoor offense. Um, a lot of coaches will think, think that, and they'll say, well, I don't want to run that backdoor stuff. It's just a gimmick. It, it's, you know, the good Princeton teams will go backdoor, and they'll use the screen, and they'll curl the screen. So they're throwing three and they'll And they'll knock down that. threes. <laughs> and they'll knock down threes, yeah. Because that will so, open it up. Yeah, I think I think the reason people think it's the back door is because that's what they see on TV. That's TV. what they see on TV. Oh, my God. They just backdoor Duke and, and got a layup no, kind of thing. No, you know? one, no, no one ever sees that. Yeah. You know, no, no one ever sees – you don't see that, and players aren't taught that. They're taught how to use a screen, and they're taught how to curl off of a screen. But they don't – they're never taught how to go back. Everyone – and everyone wants the ball, so they come get the ball, come get the ball, come get the ball, and it gets very, uh, very predictive. Um, but when you start teaching players to go backdoor, one, you're actually getting them an opportunity to score quicker by going backdoor. But what they're learning is they're, they're learning they're helping their teammates get open. And later on in that offense, another kid's going to go backdoor helping you get open. Right. And how, how often when you ran this at the high school level did you score off the back door rather than the three? My guess is you scored off the three more. Uh, we probably got more opportunities from three because we got open a lot. Now, now, depending on the year, yeah. we had twenty eight percent or thirty three percent, but right. Um, but we we would we would really force we would really look at that back door. But that back door for us really got us more. It really helped us um, with spacing. Pressure. It, it takes the pressure away because teams will get out and pressure. We go back door, you know. And if we have it, great, we take it. And if we, this is another thing, if if you throw a back door and you don't have a layup, I'm fine with that too. I'm one. That's my favorite turnover because. 
you're turning the ball over under your rim, and now they got to right. go. Nine feet, right. Um, instead of turning the ball over up top to get a wide open layup, so I'm I, I don't get upset when we throw a back door and we don't get it. Right. Now if they can't see, now if they throw the back door and they can't see that the help defense is there, I might get on them a little bit. But we throw that back door a lot, and if we don't have a layup, we kick it out to the corner. We always have a corner guy on a back door pass. Um, but we we probably got more threes than back doors. High school, um, you have to you have to really run it uh, well and execute well um, to get good backdoor lists. But we we got our we got a certainly got a fair share of backdoor cuts. And part of that is the size of the court, I think. Size of the court smaller. The players are not as skilled. So I would love to see the three point line in high school come out to where it is in college. That, and that, that was Bobby Knight's secret in the '80s before the three point line. He was so good teaching that motion offense. But what he understood was spacing. He right. could get his players to stay away from the paint. But once they put that line there, all those other coaches say, oh, I get it. We put our players behind that line. Look at the space we have now. Right. And, and that's one of the things. That's why we start four feet off from the three-point line. But, so, but, so, so, I'm, so here's, here's devil's advocate. I, you're four feet off. I'm just not guarding you. Yeah. We can throw the ball to the wing and run our offense. And then once we start running our offense, we're going to start – now we're going to take the – so this is the cool thing. Um, one of my mentors told me, because, you know, when you run the swing, you're moving the ball left. Your coach is swing the ball, swing the – get the defense moving left so we can go right. Get them moving right so we can go left. Well, Princeton does both. We're going to run low post. We're going to take everyone down to the baseline. And then the low post is going to throw the ball, ball out to the three-point line. Everyone – the defense, the whole defense now coming out to the three-point line – and we're going to throw it back to the five, and now we're attacking the baseline again, or we're attacking right, right and right. attacking left again. So that, that's a it's, a it's a big strategy of, of, you know, where we're getting our stuff from and how we're getting it. I love that. So tell people how they can I, – I think this is great. Tell people how they sure. can learn more about this, because I think yeah, this, so, is, this is where people are struggling. To yeah, so we, we started doing this about a uh, last November, so not even a year, just, a, um, just about seven, eight months. So we're doing a, a free three-day, we're, call, we're calling it a mastermind. So a three-day Prince and Offense mastermind. Um, and we're, we're all probably only going to do a couple of them uh, in this next year. Um, but if you go to teachhoopsprinceton.com, um, you can register there. It'll either say wait list or it'll have the date of when the next yep. one is. I'll put it down in the show notes. Yep. Yeah. And we're, we're only going to do probably two or three this, this next year. We're going to do one now. I won't do one again until either next spring or summer. Um, as coaches kind of get into this. So um, go to teachhoopsprinceton.com. That's hoops with an S. Teachhoopsprinceton.com. Um, just put your name and email in there and we it will be send great. You. I, I, I was teasing coach. I'm signing my, my assistant coaches up. But the, yeah. but the issue is – and, and see, um, see if they can talk you into running a little bit. I know. I think they're going – I mean, you're, you're convincing me slowly but surely. It's one of those <laughs> things. It's like one of my former assistants in my AD right now. You should just tell me stuff like six months before he wanted me to do it. So it's sure. – just, just plant, <laughs> plant the seed. You plant the seed. Let it grow let it, a little bit. Hey, coach, look at this. I know. Let it, let he it grow would do a that. Bit. I Water knew. I know he did that. Um, but no, I think this will be great. And this is not. This is going to be like if you sign up for this, this is going to be great. It, you are going to learn. You're going to learn enough that if this is the right fit for you, and it's not sure. five minutes, this is going to sure. be. This is going to be a yeah. couple hours a it's night for three nights. Yeah. A lot of coaches have a problem with now that Princeton offense stuff. It's just for those smart guys. We don't have. We don't have those players. It's too complicated. I can't teach it. I'm going to break all that down, make it real easy, um, and, and show you how the offense works, how it manipulates the defense, um, how easy it is to put in, how easy it is for a coach to learn, and then right. how easy it is to raise the level of your players and get your players to, to run it no matter what kind of players you have. Yeah, coach is going to make it so, the, so – he's going to make it so simple that I could even run it. That's how simple <laughs> he's going to make it. All right, thanks, coach.